AppCode is a smart IDE for iOS, macOS development. It supports Objective-C, C, C++, Swift, and many other languages via plugins. In this video, we'll take a quick look at AppCode, write a simple application, and show various features of the IDE in action. Let's first create a new project from the welcome screen. Click New Project, select Single View App in the dialog that opens, and press Next. Here we need to specify some details about the project, like the product name, the organization name, the project language, and others, just like in Xcode. Click Finish to select the project directory and select Open. Our newly created project is opened in AppCode. On the left-hand side of the IDE window, you can see the project view that shows all the files included in the Xcode project. There are also additional viewing modes for the project structure called Scopes which we can select by clicking on the drop-down in the project view title. One of these scopes is a files view that shows all the files in the folder where the .xc project or .xc workspace file is located. The navigation bar lets you navigate through the project structure and open necessary files. From the toolbar, you can quickly access frequently used commands such as run, debug, and others. There's also a run debug configuration selector where you can select the run configuration, similar to the Xcode scheme, and the simulator for running or debugging your application. The left gutter shows line numbers, breakpoints, and navigation icons. For example, using the gutter icon, we can open the declaration of the view did load method and jump back to its implementation. The left gutter also shows per line VCS history. We'll take a look at it later when we commit our project to version control. If we have any warnings or errors in our code, we will see the corresponding marks on the scroll bar. If we hover over them, we will see the error and warning description. The number of errors and warnings is also shown in the inspection widget in the top right corner of the editor window. This widget also allows you to navigate through the errors and warnings in the code and lets you open the problems tool window that displays a list of warnings and errors and even lets you fix them. Tool windows are like Xcode navigators. In app code, they appear at the bottom or sides of the editor window. For example, if we build a project, the build messages tool window will appear at the bottom. Now let's take a look at the app code preferences. We have a lot of options here that allow you to tune almost everything in the IDE. In the appearance settings, we can change the IDE's theme to one of the bundled themes, such as IntelliJ Lite or High Contrast. There are even more themes available via plugins, so you can install them and use them to change the look of your IDE. The color scheme section allows you to change the code highlighting options for any language. You can specify Swift code color settings separately for each specific code construct, and you can do the same for Objective-C, C, C++. In the Code Style section, you can configure formatting options for each language supported by the IDE, such as tabs and indents, spaces, wrapping behavior, and much more. The Key Map section allows you to change the keyboard shortcuts for any IDE action and assign new shortcuts to existing actions. There are several predefined key maps in app code, including the Xcode key map, which contains key bindings similar to Xcodes, and there are also a lot of key maps available through plugins. Now let's write some code and take a look at the code editing features in action. We will create a simple application that loads the list of conferences from cococonferences.com. To load this list, we will need the Alamo Fire library for making network requests and the YAMS library for parsing the conference list. We can include these libraries using CocoaPods. To do this in app code, right-click the project name in the project view and select CocoaPods, create CocoaPods pod file. The pod file is automatically opened in the IDE window. We can edit it with the code highlighting and completion for Ruby code constructs and even pod names. When we add some new pods, app code will suggest installing them, and we can do so easily using the option enter shortcut. After all the pods are installed, AppCode reloads the Xcode project with the Xcode workspace, so you don't need to reopen the project again after CocoaPods installation. Now let's switch to the view controller file and write the code. First, we need our view controller to conform to UI table view protocols. In the scope of this video, we won't make separate extensions for them. Note that we don't need to type the whole name of the protocol. We can just type a few capital letters and use fuzzy matching to have UI table view delegate and UI table view data source appear at the top of the completion list. We can quickly navigate to the error displayed using the F2 shortcut, and app code will immediately show the error description. We have two ways to implement protocol methods. The first is by using a regular fixit that we can execute using option enter. 
app code displays the same errors, warnings, and fixits as Xcode, so this action will work the same as in the Xcode editor. Another way to implement the required methods in app code is the Control I implement action. It automatically shows the list of methods to implement and inserts method stubs. We will need to return the count of conferences in the number of rows in section method. Let's write the code like we already have an array of conferences and return its count. After jumping to the error using F2, let's call option enter for intention actions. And here it is. There is an action to create a property that we can use to quickly generate the property stub. Such actions are called create from usage actions. We first write some code construct we want to use in the code, like a Swift type, function, method, or variable, and next we generate it using the intention action. We've specified an array of the conference type, which does not yet exist. We can create it from usage in the same way we created the conferences property. Press Option Enter and select Create Type Conference in a new file. In the dialog that appears, you can select various type properties such as name, Xcode project group, target name, and others. Right now, we will just use the default location. Let's implement the cell for row at index path method. We won't create a variable for our cell by hand. Instead, we will use extract variable refactoring to do it faster. We first call the tableview.dq reusable cell method. In this case, we need another method with the same name and two parameters, including the index path one. In app code, we can use the tab completion to quickly replace the method call. Invoke the code completion shortcut, select the needed method in the completion list, and press tab instead of pressing enter. This type of code completion replaces the method signature, keeping existing arguments and adding only those that weren't specified yet. In this case, we will need to add only the index path parameter instead of re-adding all the parameters for the method. Press Option Command V to extract the variable. We have several possible code constructs to extract. Let's select the whole statement and press Enter. And here we are. The cell variable is automatically extracted, and the return statement is added at the end of the function. We even have completion for possible variable names depending on the scope. We will set the cell's text label to the conference name and cell's detailed text label to the conference description. To do this, we first get the conference at index path and call the non-existent name property of the conference class. Here, we can immediately extract the conference at the current index path to a separate variable using the extract variable refactoring and reuse it to set the conference description. Now we can create the conference class properties using create from usage actions and save our time not writing them by hand in the conference class. Let's create our table view in the view did load method. To quickly jump between methods inside the view controller class, we can use the control up down shortcuts. Again, we create the table view property from usage. Note that when specifying the frame for UI table view, we can use smart completion for the parameter name. Smart completion will filter out methods that return the same type that method parameter has. In our case, it's CG rect. For our example, we will use the dot zero frame and the dot plane table view style. Now that we have our table view, we can set its delegate and data source to our view controller and register a custom cell that does not yet exist. To create this cell, we will use the create from usage action. In the my conference cell class, we will override the init method using the control O override action and set the cell style to subtitle. Note that we don't care about the formatting of the code. In app code, we can quickly reformat any code using the command option L shortcut. Finally, we add a required initializer and just call super.init inside it. We're almost ready to load our conference list. Let's create a load conferences method from usage. To execute the network request and parse its response, let's import the Alamo Fire and YAMS libraries. We can write a request that uses a URL stored in the conf URL variable, which does not yet exist, but is not required for us to continue writing our code. We will create it later from usage. To jump from the conf URL global variable declaration at the top of the file to the last edited location in our code, we can use the shift command back shortcut. Now we need to add code that converts the response data into a string and passes it to the decoder. We can create a YAML decoder using the extract variable refactoring and set the conference's property to the value returned from the decode method. We have errors in our code that we can fix using the quick fixes available via option enter. First, we will suppress an error from the decode method and then change let to var for the conference's property to make it mutable. 
Finally, we're able to add our table view to the view controller and call tableView.ReloadData to make sure that our data is loaded and displayed in the table view. As we set TableView's frame to zero after creation, we will need to override the ViewDidLayoutSubViews method of our view controller to set the TableView frame to the view's bounds. We will do this using the override action and speed search. Speed search works in app code tool windows and allows us to filter the contents by typing in the search item. Let's run our project. In app code, you can run the project using the Control R shortcut and debug it using Control D. We see an error printed in the console, and it looks like there is no conference description. Let's take a look at the data returned by the server. To do that, we can use a scratch file with an HTTP request type that allows us to test HTTP requests right from the IDE. In the file that opens, type get and paste the conference URL. Next, run the request using the shift Control r shortcut and it'll take us here. The response is shown in the tool window at the bottom. Indeed, there is no description property. Let's use the conference location instead. We can jump to the description property using the, the go to symbol shortcut, option command O, and rename the description property from the conference class using the rename refactoring. The rename refactoring changes all usages of a symbol throughout the whole project, so we can just run our tutorial project without having to worry about whether it'll work. As you can see, now the list of conferences is displayed in the table view. We now have our classes included at the top level of the project. Let's try to reorganize them. For that, we can use the Group From Selection action. Right-click the file in the project view, select New, Group From Selection, and just add the group name where you need to put your class. Let's create a Controls and Controllers group to store our controls and view controllers. Finally, let's rename the View Controller class to Conference View Controller. When writing the code, we frequently need to check the code documentation. App code displays documentation from Xcode doc sets, and you can view it using the F1 shortcut. There's also a Shift F1 shortcut for using the external documentation providers. By default, it's a web version of the Apple documentation. You can also set it to Dash if you're using it in Preferences, Editor, External Documentation. And in this case, External Documentation will be opened in the Dash application. Let's take a quick look at debugging. Set the breakpoint inside the load conferences method and press Ctrl D. App code will start the debugging session. As soon as we hit the breakpoint, the debug tool window is shown at the bottom of the IDE window. The debug tool window shows variable values, frames, and allows you to switch to the LLDB console. We can step over using F8 and see how the variable values change. Note that the app code debugger also displays variable values inline in the editor window. We can view variable values right in the debugger tool window, or switch to the LLDB console and print it using the LLDB commands. After we've created our application, we probably need some unit tests to cover its functionality. Here in the tutorial tests file, we have two tests. One of them tests parsing the conferences list, and another one validates parsing a single conference. We can run or debug all tests in this file using the gutter icon or using the shift Control r shortcut. The test runner tool window appears at the bottom and shows the test tree on the left and the test output on the right. We can see that a test fails and we can click the error message in the test output to navigate to the exact line in the code where the error happens. In this case, we've missed a comma in the conference location. Let's add it and rerun only fail tests by clicking on the corresponding icon in the test runner tool window. As you can see, only the fail test is executed again by the IDE. Now, as we fixed all the tests, we can rerun all the tests in the file using the gutter icon, and as you can see, all of them have now passed successfully. The test runner tool window also stores results of the previous test runs in the test history, and allows us to export and import test results. We're now ready to commit our changes to the version control system. Press Ctrl-V to get to the VCS operations pop-up, and select Create Git Repository by pressing 3. In the dialog that opens, select the project directory, and it'll take us to this point. The Git repository is created. As you can see, all the files in the project view are highlighted in a light brown color. That means they have not yet been added to our new repository. Press Command-K and select the directories you need to commit in the Local Changes tool window on the left. Press Option-Command-A to add them to the commit, Press space to select all the files in the default change list, and then press the commit button to commit the changes.
Press Command 9 and switch to the Log tab. Here, you can see the list of commits with all the necessary information about them, including the changed files on the right and various filters for this list. To show diff for any file, double-click it in the file tree on the right or use the Command D shortcut. Now, if we change anything in our code, app code will show the changes in the left gutter. You can click on them and see what has been changed and even open the diff window from there. Finally, let's share our project on GitHub. Execute Shift Command A, Share Project on GitHub, enter the repository description, and press Share. App code will create a repository on GitHub, which you can open in the browser by clicking on the link in the IDE notification. So that just about covers all the basic features App Code provides to make your coding more productive. To learn more, check out our tutorials in the help section on our website and the other videos on our YouTube playlist.